This short video aims to address common concerns associated with draping to aid medical students in becoming comfortable and competent with draping patients. Ensuring that the patient is draped appropriately is a critical consideration for the physical exam. As a clinician in training, it's important for you to feel confident and relaxed while draping so that you can focus on your patient's comfort and care. It's difficult to provide a comfortable patient experience when you feel uncomfortable yourself. In medical school, we have so many things to learn. Why do we need to learn how to drape? It seems so easy. In fact, most medical students find draping difficult, awkward, and uncomfortable. Draping is often the first physical interaction you will have with a patient, and it makes a strong impression. Therefore, it's important for you to consider your approach. Even though most physical exams require some sort of draping, there aren't any universally accepted guidelines on how to do it. Trust us, we asked around. A 2012 Canadian survey of health professional students found that most students had difficulty draping and said that they wanted more time to learn how to drape properly. So let's learn about draping. There are 10 principles to consider when draping patients. The first is consent. Before beginning, remind the patient of the purpose of the exam, then explain which of the areas of the body you will need to expose. Try to do this calmly and with confidence to reinforce that this is an ordinary part of their health management. Ask for their consent before beginning. The next two principles, privacy and exposure, are related. Ultimately, the purpose of any physical exam is to examine the body. Therefore, some level of exposure is necessary. There can be a fine balance, however, between privacy and exposure. Expose the specific area that you are examining and limit exposure to other areas. Some exams have more than one possible draping technique. If the patient does not consent to the most common exam technique, you may be able to offer one that affords greater privacy. While maintaining respect for privacy, it is also essential that you are able to see the area that needs to be examined. You should not be working with your hands underneath the drape. Explain this to patients. They may feel more comfortable exposing an area when they understand why it is necessary. Security and control. You want your patient to feel safe and cared for. One way to achieve this is to ask the patient to help you by holding on to the draping sheet. This can help empower the patient as they are in control and can also make them feel more secure. Comfort and warmth. This one's pretty obvious as you want to ensure patient comfort. This includes modifying the draping technique based on the patient's capabilities. It's important for the patient to be at a comfortable temperature. Use blankets or be conscious of their body language if you need to expose the patient for an extended period of time. When you are finished with the exam or taking a break, don't forget to tell the patient that they can put their gown back on and offer to assist them if they need extra help with redressing. Be aware of any potential cultural considerations that may exist as you may need to modify your technique, but also don't assume that someone from a specific culture adopts all the traditions of that culture. It's mostly about being aware and asking the patient to clarify if you are unsure. For example, you might ask, is there anything I should know about your privacy or modesty concerns before I conduct an examination? Drape every patient in the same manner, regardless of their age or gender. This may of course change depending on culture, but do not assume, for example, that males are more comfortable with their chest exposed. This may or may not be the case. It is best to err on the side of modesty. Similar to the previous principle, you can ask your patient about their privacy or modesty concerns before beginning. The last principle, respect, is maintained through observing the above principles in a conscientious and professional manner. Rarely, it may so happen that you have followed these general guidelines with a patient and they are still not comfortable with the level of exposure required to perform the exam properly. Try asking, is there something I can do or change in this environment to ensure that you feel more comfortable with my examining you? It's also important at this point to check back in with the patient to see whether you have consent to proceed. Be explicit. Are you sure that you're okay with me examining you today? And if the patient says no, then that is the end of the exam. If they say yes, you can try and build rapport by examining a less intimate area, such as taking their pulse, and then move on to draping the patient. Ultimately, as pre-clerkship medical students are not involved in patient care, if the patient remains very uncomfortable, you should consider ending the exam. All of these principles, when taken together, will help promote patient dignity and ensure that you maintain a positive and professional relationship with your patient. Here are some takeaway points. Proper draping is necessary for comprehensive patient care, 
but remember that there is no gold standard for draping and every patient is different. Always be prepared to adjust your technique according to your patient's wishes. Flexibility is key. We hope this short video helps you on your way to smooth, respectful, and confident draping. Just like any new skill, practice is necessary for mastery. But believe in yourself. You can drape it.